So, good evening. Just faffing around with my light. Bear with me. Jesus Christ, what is this doing? Um, but yeah, sorry about the wait. This light's doing my nothing. Keeps falling over off of this little tripod thing I've got. But anyway, it's working now. I'm here. I've now blinded myself so I can't see anything. But um, we are in advanced talks with a left back. Um, I actually said he was a right back in my transfer update. don't know why I was thinking right back because he is clearly a left back. But um, we're in advanced talks with him. And um, it's a bit of a weird one, if I'm being honest. Um, it's come out of nowhere, which is normally what happens when we do actually sign a player. It's a player that we're not necessarily linked with forever. And it's just a bang, get it done. Um, now, I'm going to read through the three possible options with this guy. And now I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. Um, Rouse and Haley's in charge of getting this deal done, obviously. Um, the three options, this is that's out there. Ormstein's tweeted out. I'm going to come on to some more stuff about what he's said and whether whether I believe it or not. Um, but he said um, we could sign him on loan until the end of the season, basically. These are the three options that I'm looking at. Yeah? We could sign him on loan until the end of the season and then we get him for free because his contract expires in the summer. Um, we could get him now on a low fee. Um, a, a really cheap fee. Um, the fee that's being reported is about six million quid. Um, is that worth it for six months when he's free in six months plus wages for that six months? Probably not. Um, and then the other option is just wait until the summer and get him for nothing. Now, um, I think the most possible and likely outcome would be um, he joins us on loan and then we sign him for nothing at the end of the season. Um, since he's been at PSG, he scored 12 goals, 19 assists in 114 games, which isn't actually too bad for a left back. But then you've got to factor in the fact that he is playing for the best team in France. Um, they tend to win pretty much all of their games and um, nobody really gets at them, do they? They dominate pretty much most games. He's been dribbled past eight times per game. Well, that's something I was going to come to, Mikey, so thank you for that. Um, I'm baffled as to why we are going and signing a left back. I don't get it. Surely the priority should be a, a centre-back or a right-back. You know, we've got um, Maitland-Niles, who's not a right-back playing right-back, and Hector Bellerin, who's never fit. So what happens if Maitland-Niles goes down? Yes, I know Bellerin's back in training, but let's say that Maitland-Niles get, gets a, a little nasty injury in the next game, and then um, Bellerin comes in, and all of a sudden he triggers another injury. Then we're without a right back. I think a right back was more important than buying a left back or loaning a left back or whatever it is we're doing with this guy. Um, I think that, you know, obviously we've been playing Bukayo Saka at left back in the odd game. We've got, uh, say, Kalazanak out for a couple of games. Tierney's out till March. I understand why they're doing it, but it just seems a bit of a weird one. I'd rather... I'd rather put Saka there, if I'm being completely honest. This guy's 27 years old. He's going to come in on decent wages. And um, and then what? What happens with Kalazanak? What happens with um, Tierney when they're back? Then what? Then we've got three left-backs. Really? Do we genuinely need three left-backs? Uh, Tierney's back in the gym. Exactly. I see that on um, Arsenal um, Twitter yesterday. He's back in the gym. He's getting his strength and, and training back up. Um for me, like I said, there is other priorities that need to fix him before left back. Um, Ornstein sent everyone into meltdown on Twitter um, by putting a tweet out there saying that we're only looking at loan signings, um, low fee signings, um, or no signings, basically. So, um, so now everyone's in a bit of a meltdown about, oh, why aren't we spending money? Why ain't this? Why ain't that? And obviously, coupled that to Mikel Arteta's um, press conference where he said, look, we're going to try and work with the squad we've got. If something decent comes along, then we'll do it. Well, I'm sorry, we're a big football club. We shouldn't be sitting here going and getting a left back from PSG who's got six months left on his contract when he ain't no good, really. I don't rate him. Um, I don't think he's that great a player. And I don't think it's a position that we need to fill. You know, if, if Tierney comes back in and, and does another injury, um, then obviously we've got Kalazanak. If he's out injured like he is now, put Saka there. You know, how long is Kalaznak actually going to be out for? Two games, three games max? Um, so I don't understand it. I don't get it. We're going to pay this guy 70 to 90 grand a week, apparently. Probably a little bit more than that, I'd imagine, because he is going to come in as a free signing. Um, unless we do it now and loan him and then get him in the summer, he'll be a free signing, which means he'll then get a, try, um, a signing on for his agent and get a massive kickback. Is it worth it when we've done 25 million on Tierney the other day? I don't get it. Go and go, go and get a player in a position that we need. I mean, I look at it and I think that 
why did we let Nacho Monreal go? Why did we do that? You know, Nacho Monreal is better than the guy that we're looking at now. Um, they let him go because he weren't going to get playing time. So now we're going to get in a left back. And then when all three of our left backs are fit, we've got three left backs. Why? Why? We, we'll end up with more left backs and centre backs at one uh, at some point. Um, but it does look like he's about to come in. Um, all reports that are being put out there suggest that um, they're into advanced talks over it and that um, it is a deal that's going to get finalised very soon. And like I said, it's come out of nowhere. It's um, it's not inspiring one bit for me. Um, there's a reason that the reason PSG are going to let him go and they're not signing him up. And that's because he ain't that great. And um, like I said, for me, it's, it's a bit underwhelming. But there we go. Let's see what you guys think. Monreal was consistent. Don Raul is a letdown. <laughs> well, that's true. He, uh, Nacho Monreal is a good player, man. But, th but this is the thing. Why let him go? If you're going to go and play Tierney, which we did, why have you let him go if you want three left-backs at the football club? You know, I know it was a different manager at the time that did that, but Raul was still part of the process. Edu was part of the process. So why have we let a left-back go to go and buy a left-back to then go and buy another left-back? We should have just kept Monreal. You know, I, I just don't understand it. There's there's a lot of things I don't understand at the minute at this football club. But um, when we've got a right back that's more interested in fashion um, and ain't very good and is always injured, and then you've got a, um, a centre midfielder playing at right back, surely right back is more important than another left back when you've got two already. Um, so I don't really get it. Needs surgery in his spine because of his disc, it seems. Yeah, exactly. That's another thing I was going to bring up. Thank you, because I forgot about that. Um, so thank you, Chris. He, yeah, he's had surgery on um, on his spine, on a disc, right? And um, he's only played 14 games for PSG this season. And um, that might be one of the reasons why they're letting him go. But um, it's a typical Arsenal signing. It, it throws it back to the Kim Kallstrom one. You know, I, I just look at it and I just think like, you know, everyone's saying, oh, yeah, it's January. You can't buy players in January, blah, blah, blah. It's hard to get the deals done. Absolute crap. That is the biggest bullshit I've ever heard, right? We signed a Bamiyang last January. Do you know what I'm saying? Last January, we signed a Bamiyang or January before, whenever it was. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't understand this. Oh, we can't get deals done. It's hard to get deals done. Rubbish. What has Raul Haley been doing since the summer, since the transfer window ended? What has he done? Because that's where he should now be looking from that the end of that transfer window. Um, he should be liaising with Arteta as soon as Arteta came in and said, right, who do you want? What do you need? Yeah, and then they've had six, seven weeks, eight weeks since Arteta's been here, whatever it is, to then go and liaise with other football clubs, with agents and stuff like that and getting the targets they want. So then when the window opens, you could drop a sign-in on day one if you wanted to because you've already done the deal before the window opens. Um, all this, you can't sign players in January is complete rubbish. And, um, you know, Arteta sat there in the press conference and said, we're going to work with what we've got. Um, you know, it's hard to buy players in January. No, it ain't. It genuinely isn't. Yeah. What's the difference between signing them in January and signing them in, in the summer? Because when the summer comes, there's a Euros on. So what, we're not going to sign anybody in the summer as well, because it's really difficult in the summer because of the Euros. It's just excuse, excuse, excuse. Yeah, go and buy what we require to make us better. And that is not a left back who's got a dodgy back who plays for PSG. Sorry, not good enough. Um, go and buy somebody like Max Ahrens. There you go, Norwich. There's 35 million quid. We're buying him. Yeah, he'll have his head turned. He'll go, yep, sweet. I'll go Arsenal. Yeah, he'll then look at it and think, Maitland Niles is my competition because he won't worry about Hector Bellerin. Yeah, because the guy never plays. So that is where we should be looking. 35 million, 30 million, whatever it may be, go and get Max Aarons. Instead, we're poncing around with this guy from PSG um, who I've failed to see anything remotely close to being a decent left-back um, when we've already got two left-backs. I don't understand it. And yeah, they're both out injured at the minute. So put Saka there. Saka's played two games at left-back. He's looked really good at both games. So Arsenal is a new nursing home. Well, <laughs> it looks that way, doesn't it? It looks that way. Um, pound land transfers from Arsenal exactly and this is the thing I wanted to say as well right when when Arteta came in everyone was saying right now we've got to back him now we've got to back him now we've got to back him is that backing him or is that somebody he wants did he say I want that player or is that the club saying we're getting you this player because I'm sure Arteta would have had a list he said yesterday he's got a list um, but I'm sure this guy 
if he was on, well, if he was on his list, then I'm even more concerned about Arteta than I was originally. Um, because I, like I said, I've seen nothing to suggest this guy's a decent left back. Um, if he wasn't on his list, then that just goes to show that Arteta's a yes man, the same as Emery. Yeah, he will do as he's told, and we'll buy the players, and you just fit him in. Well, that ain't good enough. You know, I don't understand why we're buying another left back. It just makes no sense. It's typical Arsenal not doing what is required to move forward. It's just, oh, let's buy a left back because two left backs are injured. Well, why? Play a left winger at left back. You're playing a fucking centre midfielder at right back for fuck's sake. What's the difference? So I'm saying, I just don't get it. I genuinely don't get it. And um, and then um, Ornstein said in his um, his little, little tweet or his article or whatever it was um, that we're only going to go in for loan signings, cheap um, cheap fee players or like low fee players or free signings. Well, why are we fucking Barnet? Are we Barnet Football Club going in for a little? Oh, let's get a little loan deal going over there. And oh, that one's only one million. We'll have him. We're Arsenal Football Club. Yeah, it's just it's just unbelievable. You really believe these rumours? Um, well, to be honest, Beerus, this deal is going to happen. I think I genuinely believe this deal is going to happen. Um, as for buying low fee players, well, it's looking that way at the minute, or no players, or free signings, or loan signings. It is looking that way at the moment, isn't it? You know, at least in the summer, um, the last summer that's just gone. At least we were, at least we were putting like, or, or, or stories were coming out suggesting we were putting bids in for for big money. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and then obviously the Pepe news broke. Um, but this transfer window, we've been linked with Dries Mertens. Like, really? Cavani, really? This guy, Kazawa, really? These are all cheap players because they're running their contracts down. Yeah, is that what Arsenal will become now? Cheap, cheap, um, cheap FC, cheap player FC. Let's just go and buy him because he's three million quid to buy now. Yeah, I, I just don't get it. And um, Chris says, fraud, Raul, why is man doing this? Rob, I told you, yeah, I told you, that guy is a fraud. Yeah, he is a fraud. He sits chatting crap, yeah, and doesn't back his words up, you know? And how long have we been saying? It's been nearly a year since um, Aubameyang and Lacazette started contract negotiations. A year later, they still ain't signed. Yeah, so why? Why aren't they signed? Um, what's Raul been doing? Now, what has he actually done since the summer? to progress Arsenal forward, apart from sack a manager too late and recruit the uh, the cheapest option. It might be the best option. It might be a masterstroke. But like I said, is he buying the players or the club buying the players and sending him to play him? Because if that's the case, then and Arteta has gone in on that deal. Jesus Christ. Because I wouldn't be saying, oh, yeah, you go and get all the players for me, mate, and I'll just play them, yeah? I, I'd want the players I want. Yeah, And if Arteta has gone in under them... them um, them uh, circumstances and Jesus Christ and if he hasn't and he is picking this guy then I'm concerned because this guy is not a good player he's all right but he ain't very good and he's going to get exposed coming into this league like I said he's got a dodgy back with his spine he's had surgery on that a couple of times which kept him out for most of the season um, last season I think it was and um, he's got six months left it's going to be they want six million pounds we're trying to get it for cheaper or no fee at all we'll if you want him, go and get him. I don't want him, but if you want him as a football club, what are you haggling for? Go and get him. If you want a left back that badly, get one. Yeah, and again, for anyone joining late, I don't understand why we're getting a left back when we've got two left backs and Saka who can play left back. Um, yes, two left backs are injured. One of them's only out for a couple of games. So why why are we going to do all this money on another player um, in terms of wages, agent fee, um, signing on fee, because he'll be a free signing come the summer. Um, if we're not buying him as a free or getting him as a free signing, he's then gonna, he's then gonna, um, have, we're gonna have to pay a fee, and um, that's probably what will happen. We'll pay him the the signing on fee and not pay PSG, and we'll do it on a loan probably, and then get him for nothing at the end of the season. But it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. Uh, we are a joke of a club. Build us, uh, build all us fans up to smack us straight in the face. Says Paul. Paul. People sit here and tell me I'm negative, mate. Yeah, people sit here and tell me that you're always negative about the club. No, I have, I am sick and tired of this club taking the piss, right? And this signing smacks are taking the piss. We don't need a left back. We need a centre back. We need a right back. And we need a proper midfielder. We do not need another left back. If, like I said, if that was the case that we needed three left backs, why did we sell Nacho Monreal? I don't get it. You know, Kalazanak is out for a couple of games. That's it. 
that is it. Uh, Phil says Kalasnak might be on his way out. Well, not with an injury, he won't be right now. By the time he's back, I think the window will be shut. Um, I may be wrong on that um, in terms of league games I'm on about. But um, the FA Cup is, what, next weekend? Um, apparently, he might be back for that game, but I'm not too sure. Um, this guy has put this in this chat about four times, so we'll put you on timeout. Stop spamming my chat. <laughs> And uh, let's read some more of these. Do drive the likes up. 650 people watching this live. Thank you very much for that. We need a DM, a centre-back, and a right-back. Exactly. Do you rate Kalazanak? Um, No, is the answer. Never have. Uh, this is mental. Only my club says cope. I don't know if you're going to be able to cope, my friend. Um, thoughts on Bruno Fernandes? Uh, better than the Fernandes Tottenham signed. I don't mind Kazawa, but we need a centre back in the CM with that, says Seedon. Uh, laugh out loud, blame him rule. He's doing what he can with the budget, so stop waffling. What do you mean he's doing what he can with the budget? What are you talking about? How do you know what the budget is? How do you know that that's what he's doing? Yeah, because from the outside looking in, we spent £140 million in the summer, which was actually about £20 million um, net spend. £20 million. You're telling me Arsenal's budget for the summer was 20 million. Is that what you're saying? If that's the case, where's all the money, mate? You're not negative if you tell the truth. Thanks, babe. I appreciate that. I hope you're well. Um, Bruno Guramesh, thoughts on him? Ah, well, I'm glad somebody's asked me that because I see a nice little thread on Twitter earlier and I was um, and somebody broke it down into um into analytics and passes and pass accuracy and running and dribbled past tackles and all that. And he's basically on par with Granite Xhaka and Genduzi, um in terms of stats, um, being dribbled past, pass accuracy, diagonal balls, dribbling with the ball, um, getting forward. Um, so whilst he looks good in the Brazilian league, um, his stats suggest that he's actually not all that. But until he comes in, you don't know, do you? And stats can be very misleading. So... Um, on paper, he's no better than Xhaka and Genduzi. In reality, he might actually be fantastic, but for the amount of money they want for him, it's probably a gamble, a massive gamble. Um, the Brazilian league is not the greatest league on the planet, and this guy's stats are on par with him too in that league, which, I don't know. Can he step up another few levels? I don't know. It's a big ask. Um, I'd rather go for somebody who's in this league already. Danny D, have you seen my Gimme Mesh highlights? Not impressed, really. There you go, Cameron. Um, thank you, mate. Hope you're well. Um, yeah, I've I've seen some... Listen, anyone can look good on YouTube. I mean, I look good every day, let's be real. right? But when you put a, um, a video together of a footballer, you're never going to put the bad bits together. Or very rarely, you'll see the worst bits of a player. I see the worst bits of Lacazette's finishing the other day on Twitter. A two-minute long video of him just like missing sitters. Um, I've seen one about Lukaku, but more often than not, it's to make the player look amazing. I remember seeing one of Shamak and Bentner and Sonogo, you know, and everyone was going, oh my God, they're amazing. Um, they actually weren't, you know, and it's very difficult when you buy a player um, and you've never heard of him, like this Giramesh guy. I've never heard of him. So when, what do you do? How are you going to find out information on him? You're going to go on YouTube, you're going to go on Twitter, you're going to go on Insta, you're going to have a little look at other things. And you can only go off of what you see or what you read. To me, I think there's miles better out there, mate. Miles better. Because our played yesterday and he was great for PSG. But this is the thing. PSG are the best team in that league. they got the best players in the league. And, um, and yeah, they, they dominate 99% of the games they play in. So he's always going to look half decent, isn't he? Now put him in a league where bottom can beat top and, and vice versa. Everyone can beat everyone. Is he really all that? We're about to find out. Um, I don't think he is. I don't think he is. You have no right to speak because you don't go week in, week out. <laughs> okay, mate. You're not negative. You are able to see the lies and the bullshit behind the facade. Exactly, Akam Kuna. And this is the thing, right? When Arteta came in, I said I didn't want him. Yeah, he's a yes man. He's a puppet. I don't want him, yeah? Everyone lost their shit over me saying that, yeah? Just abuse, abuse, abuse every day for two, three, four days, yeah? But now, 
everyone sitting online going, why is Arteta buying this player? Why this player? Why does he want that? Listen, at the end of the day, it's either Arteta wants that player, and if he does, then I'm worried that that's the calibre of player he's going for. And if he doesn't want that player and the club are buying that player, then that confirms what I said. He is a puppet because the club are buying the players and saying, you've got to put that in your team. And that was never going to be a good recipe for Arsenal. We're not saying, I'm saying, if he is going for that calibre of player, then I'm worried. I am worried because um, that's his first signing. <laughs> and start as you mean to go on, yeah, with, uh, with somebody who's got a broken back and um, had repairs on his discs and his spine and all sorts. Yeah, let's go and get him because he's cheap. Jesus Christ, what has happened to this football club? What has happened? I think we should have learned our lessons from buying um, or loaning or getting or whatever it was, a free signing from Licksteiner. Um, there's been the other one with Kim Kallstrom. Club never learn. They're doing the same crap they were doing five, six years ago. And that's what frustrates me. So when people got on my case about the Arteta thing and, and about... Um, why do people watch the YouTube? You, why do people watch you being negative? I don't know, hardcore fan. Why didn't you tell me why you're watching me? <laughs> Thick as shit. Um, but yeah, when people got on my case, yeah, it wasn't because I, I don't like Arteta. It's because I've heard for 15 years the same generic crap come out of this football club. Oh, yes, if there's a player available, uh, we will try. Oh, no one was available. Well, no one's available if you don't fucking bid for him. You know, no one's available if you don't pay the going rate or sometimes over the odds for a player. You know, you, you can, you, you're just going to end up floating around fourth to tenth, which is where we've gone for the last four years, five years, ten years, because we keep doing the same things over and over again. Going and getting this guy, yeah, it might be a short-term fix while Kalazanak's out. Then what? When all three of them are fit, Kalazanak, Tierney and him, what are we doing with two of them? Where are the other two going to play? What are they going to do? Because I'm sure Tinny ain't come here to sit on the bench. Yeah, and I'm sure Kalazanak ain't come here to sit on the bench. And um, let me just boot this kid, kid out. You're ruining the great game we love. Well, fuck off then, mate. It's pretty simple. I've made it easier for you. You're banned. <laughs> Seriously, mate. Uh, Nursery FC in January. Yes. Heard Raul has bought a Zimmer frame for Kazawa for Kazawa to get the deal over the line. Yes. <laughs> Can't blame Arteta. Um, well, I can blame Arteta if that's his um if that's his signing. I can, because he's picked the wrong guy and he's picked the wrong position. So why can't I blame Arteta? Well, because he's been here five games. If he's pick if that's his signing and that's a player that he's picked that he wants, for me, that ain't good enough for this football club. Yeah, for that player, that signing, that is not good enough. You have not addressed the key issues at this football club in terms of squad personnel. We need a right back because Bellerin just ain't good enough and he's constantly injured and we are playing a centre midfielder at right back. We need a right back. How can nobody see this? You know, we don't need a left back when we've got two on the books and they'll both be back in, in action within the next six weeks. So what, we're going to buy a player for six weeks? Then what? What, does he sit on the bench? I, I just, it makes no sense. We need a centre back. Yeah, we need a central midfielder. They are the three positions, right back, centre back, centre mid. Yeah, so if Arteta has picked that player and that is the one he wanted, then yeah, I can blame him. I can blame him because it's my opinion and I don't think it's good enough to sign that player. Why do we need a left back? Thank you. Exactly. We do not need a left back. We've got no left back. Um, well, we've only got one right back at the club, mate. Literally one right back. And that is a, a, an injured Hector Bellerin that's constantly injured. So we're playing a centre midfielder at right back. So... When we've got no um, no left backs, cool. Put the left left winger Saka at left back. We've done it the other week. Why why are we not doing that again? And and like I said, Kalasnak's only out for a few games anyway. He can play right back as well. Well, listen, he can play right back, but he's played fourteen games this season. He's played one game at right back. So obviously, um, maybe that might be down to the fact that PSG's right back was fit for the other games. I don't know. I don't watch that league, but. We need a, a right back, a centre back and a central midfielder. And we need to go and get that done. Maybe not all three of them this January transfer window, but I'd expect a minimum, a centre back or a right back. And we're going for a left back. It, it just, my mind boggles. It, it just boggles. Get yeah, Matuidi, uh, best deal we can get, says John. Matuidi's a good player, man. Um, why would he come to us?
you know we ain't getting Yang Kuto no more. Uh, wouldn't surprise me if he just stayed where he is, mate, to be honest. Ainsley looks a different player under Arteta. Well, he is the best right back we've got, um, Ali, definitely. Collar is good enough as a second choice. Look at the other team's second choice. They are shit, uh, says Aravelli. Exactly, which which makes it even more ba baffling that um, we're bringing in this guy because Tierney's going to be first choice, surely. Then Kalazanak could be back up. So where's this guy going? Well, we're just going to play him at right back. Is that what we're buying a left back to play him at right back? Jesus Christ, this is like going back to fucking Wenger days, isn't it? Let's play Bellerin at left back and then play a centre back at right back. And then we'll play this player up front because fuck it, he done it in training. It's just get a sense of direction. Go and do what is required to make us better. Buying somebody with a dodgy back from PSG when we've already got two players in that position that will be back full in the team within the next six weeks, one of them within the next two weeks, it just baffles me. Our backup centre back is Mustafi Holden and Chambers is injured. We need a centre back, exactly. Um, I hope this is fake news. I don't think it is fake news, mate. I genuinely don't. I think it's going to happen. Um, Maswidi and Nacho from Real out of contract next year. They're both good players, man. They're both very good players, but they're going to have teams lining up from DJ Fury in the building. Hope you're good. Max Aaron's needed. Exactly. Go and get Max Aaron's. 30 million Norwich. We're having him. Yeah, pay him 70 bags a week. Thank you very much for starting on, on the weekend against Sheffield United. Go and get it done. It really isn't difficult. Norwich can sit there and say, no, we don't want him to go. We don't want him to go. Cool, tap his agent up. Yeah, every other fucking team does it. So why can't we? Yeah, I've had a shocker. A few beers last night, carried away. Pack it from Soho. <laughs> uh, blacked out, woke up, pissed. The bed, Miss is not happy. I mean, the big dog box struggling and stinking of it at work. <laughs> well, you've always made me laugh in my comments, man. Big up yourself, Jared. I'd rather Kazawa than Aaron's. Wow. Wow. That's a bold statement, my friend. Thomas Mounier for short term is out of contract in the summer, says Louis. Another one I'm flattered to uh, be deceived by. Stop scapegoating Mustafi, but yes, he needs to move. Who scapegoated him? Who scapegoated him? What age group do you think most of your subscribers are? Um, well, I actually do know the age group of my subscribers, mate, because I've got it on an app. Uh, it tells me everything that I need to know, where you're watching the world and everything. Um, it tells me up to the minute. Um, so I'll tell you, mate. I'll tell you as soon as you've asked. Um, audience, there we go. Audience. So top countries. I'll do top countries first. Lifetime of the channel. 51.1% are from the UK, 10.7% from the US, and 3.5% from Australia. They're the top three countries um, that watch. Um, age group, here we go. Let's go age range. 2.3% are age 13 to 17. So apparently it's all kids that watch this channel. It's all kids. The demographic is all kids. Um, well, only 2.3% are 32,800 are kids. 18 to 24-year-olds is 21.6%. Um, 25 to 34 um, 25 to 34 years old is 37.8%. 35 to 44 is 21.6%. 45 to 54 is 10%. 55 to 64 is 4.5%. And then 65 plus is 2.2. So actually, um, the second... Or the lowest is 65 plus, but the second lowest is kids. So it's all kids that watch your channel. You only get the kids watching. It's all clicks for kids. Well, it's clearly not. So there we go. Um, never never let the truth get in the way of a good story, eh? I'm 35, I'm 40, I'm 15. Look, we have a kid in the building. <laughs> I, I didn't realise you were 45, Ali. I wouldn't have said 45, man. 38, Jesus Christ. I actually feel young today then. Um, but yeah, the average is, or um, well, the main bulk is is 35 to 44. The cycle will keep going on every year until the entire board and owner operation fuck off, says Proof Professor Feathers. Exactly, mate. Listen, I, I've said the biggest problem at this football club is the board of directors. They are the issue. Yeah, the owner now has the full control of the club. He can sack the fucking lot of them. But 
He probably won. And listen, why would he? He knows nothing about football. So he's going to leave people that know stuff about football in charge, isn't he? I kind of get it. But at the same time, we're just going to constantly be on this circle um, every single year. I'm 92. <laughs> um, what will happen to Tierney and Kalazanak says Goon and Av? Well, exactly. Um, who is 17? I'm 40. Uh, well, I'm 38 this year. Six months and I'm 38. Getting old, man. Why don't Conky spend? Um, it's not. I'm not going to go into that right now. I'll do another stream about that another day. But it's not Cronky who spends the money. People think it is. It's not. It's Arsenal Football Club spending Arsenal Football Club's money. Um, and he pays an absolute fortune to all these people to run his business, which is what businessmen do. I was watching a video today about the guy who owns Gymshark, popped up on YouTube. Young lad owns Gymshark. Um, yes, he's kind of hands-on, but it's not like he's in six different countries at the same time on the same day talking to every member of staff and doing this and doing that. He pays a fortune to people to run his business for him. So, so yeah, life begins at 40. Um, Tim is 63. Big up, Tim. <laughs> I'm going to wrap this up in about 30 seconds. So do drive the likes up. Thank you to two and a half thousand people that now follow my Facebook page. Um, I do appreciate that. If you haven't followed it already, uh, go and like it, go and follow it. Links in the description along with my Insta and my Twitter. Um, but that has grown 2,000 people since Sunday. So thank you very much to every single one of you. Um, born on Valentine's Day. No, that's a shitter, that one, mate. Valentine's Day. Although that could be a double whammy, couldn't it? It could be a, it could be a double shitter or it could be a double good one, couldn't it? It's like people that are born on Christmas Day, man. I feel kind of sorry for them. It's like it's kind of overshadowed your day, isn't it? All right, Chig is going to go video mad tonight. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen. I think, um, I'm not sure, but I think he kind of um, likes the idea of this guy coming in as well, this Kazawa guy. Um, I see. Well, I think it was his tweet. I might, I might be lying. I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it was his tweet saying that he can, he can understand it. Uh, when is Saliba coming? Saliba is coming roasted in the summer. Another quality stream. Thank you, Jo. Uh, thank you to everyone in the chat. I'll be back at nine o'clock. I'm going to go and have something to eat. And um, yeah, thanks very much. Let's hope that this story doesn't um, actually come true, but sadly, I think it will. And uh, let's hope they do what's required to go and get what we need. But um, I will see you all at nine o'clock. Well, latest peeps.